let's get started. So the company is going to be out of Fruinia, a town called Vita. Fruinia was really the best choice in my eyes because it has access to Hedvesia right from the start and do Lua pretty much in your first facelift. So, you know, three big markets for sports cars are available right away. Uh, Gazmia, that won't really be the case. Uh, and Gazmia opens in 1970 as well, which is pretty early and right about when those types of cars take off. Now, to set this up, uh, with the 20 times multiplier, you know, I thought about doing zero cash, and it's just with the low volume we're looking at, that's going to be too difficult to get going. Uh, so in Fruinia, go to insane. Um, 50 million should be enough. Up the competitor to up the score here. Small, small, tiny, small. Um, you know, you're not going to need more than a tiny factory to start with the cars. This is the smallest you can make for engines. Um, if we need to expand the car factories later, we can, but I think this is a good start. I like to lower the engineering to get the cars out as fast as we can. Market volatility should be good. So we've got a little to play with. We're at 20.39. We're going to put a lot in aerodynamics anyways. Perfect. So we put one into engine. I, I think that, I don't think that should both say bottom end, but we'll put one into the uh, engine here and we're at 20. So there's our start. So let's jump into Shark Motorsports first engine and car model. Uh, now I've already set everything up. I didn't want to bore you with the details of me going through the process of you know everything uh, I have OCD with a lot of that stuff so it's just clicking 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 um, that really interesting so I'll just go through everything I did why I chose what I did um, it's not don't know if it's gonna be the best reasons behind it as you know my car knowledge before automation was I just love cars I knew the basics about engines and the cars I love driving them um, but I couldn't fix a car, you know, and, and what I learned through this game is probably 10 times what I knew before the game. So starting with the engine, uh, it's the Hammerhead engine. You can see there's two variants that I made. It'll be out of the Vita Hammerhead factory in Fruinia. Uh, we have the... 5 liter and a 3.6 liter. I name mine just with the year and the size of the engine. So starting out with the big engine, I've, I've never started with an engine this big in the game. Uh, I usually start sports cars, but more the family sports cars, maybe GT, where I'm selling 150 to 200. So knowing I'm only going to be selling about 50 to 80 cars, um, one with a little and knowing we had to hit a top speed of at least what 154 I figured let's go big uh, so I went with the 5 liter knowing we got to use this in future cars as well until aluminum comes out uh, a bit high in the power um, figured it might have issues with this but but we'll see uh, 285 horsepower 306 torque is the first engine uh, I do plan on doing a facelift in 48 so I plan on getting this out really quickly, which is where that 90% engineering will help us out, um, so that I can use some of the new tech in a couple years for the 1950 release. So anyways, uh, this is all straightforward, cast, 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 harmonic damper, uh, got it to a nice round smoothness of 85. Um, again, OCD, numbers all got to be perfect here. Probably not the exact perfect way to do it, or the right way to do it, I should say. But everything falls in line, no warnings. Uh, 8.6 compression, you know, everything here. It doesn't rev as high as I would have liked, but I guess for 1946, that's not bad. 6,000 RPMs. Now, with the fuel system, uh, single, barrel, triple, 
and this is where in 48 we're going to double barrel. We'll stick with the triple. Uh, performance mid, going to the performance high doesn't really add anything. In fact, it makes torque a little bit lower. Uh, super leaded, its availability is good enough for that. Uh, and our other engine will go with the regular. Exhaust, uh, tubular long isn't needed. Um, but it's, you know, for the familiarity, doing it now I think will help in the long run. Um, you know, future engines we're not going to have mid, it'll either be long or race. Uh, dual, none baffled. Uh, we don't really need this for this engine. I guess we could add a few horsepower, but you know, we'll leave it at baffled. And there it is. Alright, so going to the other version, which doesn't really matter for the fastest car part, but this is going to help us sell more at a cheaper cost. Um, not that this engine's going to cost less, but it's more of a, the car's going to be able to handle it more and we'll get some better stats out of it because of that. So when we went with the 3.6 liter for this one, 180 horsepower, 206 torque. So this is a lot more manageable of a car. Uh, smoother engine because of the size difference too. Everything is really the same for, you know, engineering reasons. If we change any of this, that could add a lot of time, which we can't do right now. Uh, very short time span for this first uh, challenge. Uh, this is where I did go to the regular 87 to, you know, allow more markets to buy it. All this is the same, a little bit smaller exhaust. And that is that engine. Okay, now for the model and the trims. We've got the Amakua 48CP, which is Coupe, and RD, which is Roadster. Starting with the Coupe. This has the 5 liter engine in it. This is the one of my favorite bodies to start with. Uh, it's very versatile. You can use it in GT, almost family, premium as well because it's 2 plus 2. Very good looking car. Uh, this is where I love the copy paste new feature uh, where you can just copy fixtures, paint, morphs from Sandbox and paste it into your campaign. So you make all these cars in Sandbox or you can make them in campaign and in the company museum or history tab you can then export it to Sandbox so you've got it there. Um, it just it made this game so much nicer to play uh, as it's just you get a lot more involved when you have an actual looking car like this that you're working on. So yeah, so there it is. That's the Amakua Coupe. This is the one that we are going to try to break the world speed record with. Drivetrain, uh, yeah. manual, four speed. Can't do anything else there. Uh, it is a front engine, um, but huge engine bay in this thing, even though it's a tiny car. Uh, the wheels, so we went with Hard long life because it actually helped us go faster. Um, the cornering sucks, the acceleration sucks, but top speed, this was the best. Uh, 13 inch wheels to get the biggest tires we can on it. Same thing, tallest or highest, highest diameter, tire diameter. Uh, so we're at 185s. Brakes, one as big as we can, 65 brake pad. We still have got all kinds of warnings on that. I didn't want to go too crazy with the cooling airflow. Uh, 
we still went down to 40. The brakes, we went up to 38 to give it something. This, you got no choice. If you want top speed, you got to put a lot into this. Um, it gets really expensive towards the top here. And you got to cut it off somewhere, and especially because we wanted to get it out in 24 months. 2 plus 2 going to 2 seats actually didn't help us with the top speed, so I figured let's make it a little more practical. Uh, I went with Sport just for the weight savings, weight and cost savings over handmade. Luxury AM to give it that extra prestige. Standard stuff here. Uh, I did put the distribution more towards the rear, even more than it you know already is because of where the engine is, just to get it to around 54, 46 for a little more traction, uh, as low as it can go for you know drag resistance. So you can see here what the price is, we're at 47 total cars. Alright, now for the Roadster. So this is the version that I made hoping to get more sales out of it. Um, it's got the 36 engine. Almost identical styling, you know, just two seats instead of four in this one. Um, so with the wheels, same 13 inch, but we didn't go up on the quality to save some costs there. Production units, so they're at 175s. Drivetrain's the same. So we brought the speed way down. Brakes, you still have issues, not as much as you can see. There's not as many issues here. There's a little bit of brake fade, which you can't really avoid, at least not with engines this size. Dampers are fine. Um, steering heavy, oh well. So here I did increase the brake flow as much as we could, and the cooling airflow is more what it should be. This is all the same as the other version. Didn't play with the weight distribution too much because it's already a bit better because it's a convertible. So there's already more weight towards the rear. Uh, suspension, you still left it pretty low. So I priced these as you can see, the coupe is at 21.8, the Roadster is at 17.8. Normally it's the other way around, the Roadster's at more, but because of the bigger engine and everything, that's why this one is more. Sales, it's estimating 47. Now, I've already simmed ahead so that I can record all this. We, we didn't quite hit the 47, um, which, you know, gave us a little bit of struggles, but it wasn't too bad. Um, it did pick up and get close to that before the launch of the facelift. Uh, but I, I knew this was going to be an issue. Okay, now to the engineering. So this is where I had to, you know, play around a little bit. We had to lower the tooling a lot, which is fine because we're not going to sell a lot. So jacked up the processing to get the lowest cost, lowered the tooling, uh, had to lower the re reliability and only had to do that because we wanted to hit this 24 months because we do want to get this up higher. I, I know it's that market doesn't care too much about it, but I, I think it still helps. Um, funding and pressure. Okay, so the engine, it's the same thing. We, we And this was even tougher to get to the 24 months because engineering of a V12 takes forever. So the tooling, we had to go all the way to zero, which is fine because it's a small factory, which was going to make way too many engines regardless. Uh, process at 100, similar to the car. That's, you know, had to lower the reliability to get there. And, and you know, with the funding, we are still tight on money, so I didn't want to jack that up too much. Uh, as you can see, it's just the small factory. Uh, because we had 50 million, 
normally I do zero cash starts, so I, I can't do anything. I just have to let it go the way it is. With the 50 million, I figured it was worth 14 to add the maintenance building, because we're going to be at a small one, small two for a while. So I think in the long run, this is going to save us some money, and we have the cash to do it right now. Um, again, so we have five months build time. So as long as this, as long as we have one shift after five months, we're good. Um, the 13 months for two and a half, we'll never hit two and a half shifts, so we don't have to worry about that. So I was able to jack up the worker quality, lower the wages a little bit. Yeah, this I didn't mess with too much as the cost is already pretty high. Um, so up the tooling quality a little bit just for quality of the engine in the car, hopefully, you know, less recalls. So with that, see, we're going to produce 112 engines, which is more than double what we need. Uh, but there's no smaller factory than a small one. And a, you know, consignment engine factory is way too expensive. You know, we're at $4,400 for these two engines. If we did the consignment factory, um, it would be probably ten to 12000 per engine, which just kills everything. So for the car factory, uh, stuck with the tiny one, can make 48 a month. Can't do anything here. <laughs> it's a uh, tiny factory, can't add anything on. Worker quality, you know, we, we don't have many months to deal with here because we didn't do anything to it. So upped it as much as we could. These, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, um, you know, to, to beat a hundred and a hundred, uh, but you know, you look at the profit and the cost, the cost is almost nothing to do this. Uh, and it shows that we're going to make a lot more money. So whenever I have these small factories, I always go hundred, a hundred on these. So as I showed before, this is, uh, prices this is super low margins um, cars like this you want to be high but with us rushing it out uh, so we can get that facelift done you know and all the raw upfront costs that we have it's not too surprising it's this low um, if I up the prices more we just wouldn't sell any so I had to just deal with it uh, <laughs> we're not gonna make a lot of money the first year but then hopefully we're going to Now, because of this cash reserve we have, it's $34 million, I decided not to do a loan. Um, the interest in a new company can kill you. I, I've had it happen in many campaigns where it, you just, you know, you have a $600,000 loan payment, you're only making $500,000. You, you just, you're stuck in the mud. So part of the reason we took the $50 million to start was so we wouldn't have to take an opening loan. Now we might have to take one in the future, or the game might force us to with the bankruptcy loan, but we'll deal with that when uh, when it happens. The Amakua First Edition has launched. We sold 42 vehicles the first month. Uh, you know, we had pre-orders 146 and 243 of the Roadster. So a decent amount. It's showing eight months. Um, you know, we're making 47 a month. So, you know, that's with this low of volume, that's going to go by quickly. This is going to go down quickly. Uh, we are showing a bit of a desirability penalty. Um, that's actually a, a big penalty. 41% for five-month wait on the supercar. Uh, oh, well, what are you going to do? So we went ahead and facelifted the engine and the car so that they were going to come out in 1949 just in time to break the 1950 world record. We'll start out with the engine. I won't go into the 40, 36 engine uh, as we didn't really change much there. With the 50, I did up the horsepower. It's now at 295 and 312. Uh, 
just just shy of that 300 you know number but I wasn't gonna push it anymore uh, we didn't change much we, we did increase the RPMs to 6200 which you know that's right at our limit here um, with the harmonic damper at plus 9.8 pounds you know that's why I said I didn't want to do too much more with that you're you're forcing a lot onto the engine but we did change it to the two barrel triple carb which lowered the weight of the engine a little bit gave us better fuel economy and a little more power uh, so I think it was worth doing that the way we did I don't know why I keep saying we instead of I uh, so here we were able to leave this the same as we don't want to produce a lot of engines but up the reliability and decrease the funding and pressure a little bit and still be at that 22 months the cost went up because of the change to the two barrel on this one but it didn't go up too much on the 36 now for the cars for the 50 facelift so these will actually come out they're scheduled to come out I don't think this shows it anywhere um, in December 1949 but it'll be 1950 model year so that's what we're calling it the Roadster we didn't change much you know we just put the the new two barrel engine into it pretty much left everything else the same um, as you can see you know the brakes just with the extra two years the, the brakes have come more in line with where they should be without having to go crazy with the brake pad no new tech nothing new on that front so everything else was the same uh, as you can see I was able to increase the prices um, I, I think it had to just do with the marketing you know we are hitting a wider market now um, so more people are buying it so we're able to increase that and as you'll see our cost went down as well which is great so for the coupe so this is it this is the one we stuck the 295 horsepower engine into it uh, we, we did some changes the body quality went up to a plus two the drivetrain the wheels are a plus three brakes are a plus plus three aerodynamics we went to the plus 13 I don't know why I stopped at 13 and didn't go 15 but we're at plus 13 you know even the interior um, suspension we went all out on this one uh, some pretty crazy sportiness numbers for 1948 but some of the decisions you know I, I already talked about the hard long life to get the top speed and this this is showing 174.4 um, but we're gonna break that on the test track alright so we go to the test track we got to go to the Delua salt pan and we're gonna give this a go speed it up so we're not waiting forever So here we are at the launch. So we are in December 1949. The car just launched, finished engineering. Um, Pre-orders are small. And, and this is, I think, a big reason the pre-orders are small is because of the short engineering time. It, they only had 22 months to gather pre-orders. Uh, so we're at 127 and 75. We still have a bit of the old models, which isn't a bad thing. They'll sell out in the next month. Uh, so to have one extra month, oh well. Uh, so let's go ahead and sim this to show that we sold some in January 1950. 
and there we go we did made 800 grand still at 9 million our company value dropped from what was it 50 million to 26 million still a plus credit uh, <laughs> we didn't sell many we sold 8 and 15 um, it, it probably has something to do with this you know we had old cars and we delivered 27 old cars so 27 and 23 so we sold 50 total which is about what we were at I, I don't I don't know what this is uh, 189 deliveries we can't make we only make 50 a month so I don't know where that number is coming from um, but yeah we're good we're making money we're good to go we sold some 180 mile an hour car and we, we sold eight of them this month uh, in fact we could some a few more see see what happens here oh see we already had a quality issue <sighs> discovery chance high issue significant we're gonna take a huge reputation hit right off the bat but we got to do it low cost 230 grand so we're out of these I think we gotta scrap this, otherwise it's gonna stay out here. I just wanna see if this evens out. Okay, there we go. So, this is now showing you... We delivered 47. So that, that first number, I don't know where that came from, but we delivered 47. We sold 39. We're starting to build stock, so we're gonna have to figure out what to do here. We're not really making a lot of money. We have 9 million, 25 million company value. We're in for, for some rough times uh, before 1960. I think we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to figure out what to do here. Oh, I forgot about that. So this says country, but I think this is supposed to be Delua. So Delua has opened its borders. So if we do a facelift, we will have another market to sell through, and that I think is going to help us significantly move more cars. Let's close by talking about a couple things I did not talk about earlier, which were marketing and research and development. So with marketing, I usually, especially early on, I spend any free cash flow I have into marketing because you got nothing. You start with nothing. These numbers are nothing. Any money you've got, you got to put in the market. Um, we only have two countries right now. Delu is opening up, so I'll, I'll do this as we do the next facelift. Um, you know, Hibetia, I got a couple sportiness and one prestige. Fruinia, now uh, this should be up to one or to two. Uh, same thing, you know, a couple sportiness, prestige, get something going, power, convertible speed, uh, and then just one prestige. I'm not, not exactly sure what these do. Um, you know, they've made it where this is very easy to see exactly what this does. You know, I, I click up a convertible point and you see this jump hugely. Um, you know, that it's immediately you can see what it did. Um, with these, it, you don't see anything. Uh, and I did ask on Discord and, and someone said, uh, you know, it does. I don't know if it affects these numbers. Um, or it's just behind the scenes, but you know these are there's a reason they're so expensive. Uh, so they do help. Just not sure exactly how much. Like to me, it kind of seems like these are more important. The marketing per month it, it grows the awareness here. I'm sure these do something, but I usually wait till later in the game to up those. For research and development, I don't have money yet to put into any technology. Uh, we will start. You know, as we see something coming up that we really need, we'll bump it up. Um, I, I would like to have a baseline of two or three points on all this stuff, uh, just to get ahead. Uh, it will matter for car bodies, uh, you know, especially for this challenge. You know, one I love to use is this one right here, but this ain't going to be ready for 1960 model. Um, maybe we'll aim for 1970 on that. Same thing, these, those won't be ready. Um, Maybe one of these. I don't know if it'll be worth it to spend the money to upgrade to one of these versus what we have. 
Uh, I'll have to look into what the drag and everything is on those. So we always keep what we have and just upgrade the engine or update the engine.